guys welcome back to the channel uh for the first time i'm gonna ask you not to watch one of my videos the video that i did recently where i tried to replicate my audi tt at scale it was uh an attempt but now our collaborator camilo from uh, virginia has just uh, created a proper professional video tutorial on how to properly replicate your TT at scale and this video is coming up so Camilo you did a great job man fantastic and please don't watch my video watch this what's up TT Nation tonight I'm going to show you guys how to make a 118 scale model replica of your car um, all the tools you're going to need in order to do this and uh, I've made a couple of these for a few people so I'm going to show you all the little tricks that I've learned along the way to hopefully help you make it faster than the first one that I ever made. Um, all together, uh, if you're quick at it, you're looking about an hour and a half to three hours worth of, time, of your time. Um, roughly 30 to an hour to disassemble it, 30 minutes to an hour to paint it, and then 30 minutes to an hour to put it all back together again. Um, and I'm going to show you step by step exactly how to do it. So let's get started. All right guys, jumping right into it. Obviously the first thing you're gonna need is a 118 scale model of your car. On eBay, you're gonna find these things for about 30 to $50 with shipping. Um, typically what you're gonna find, these are made by Miesto. Uh, typically you're gonna find that a car has your interior, your wheels, but the body is not gonna be right. So you're gonna just have to paint it to make it your car, right? <laughs> tools you're going to need a uh, phillips head screwdriver to take apart some screws an exacto knife or a razor blade i use a small flathead screwdriver to pry some parts out i use this tiny allen key to push some of the parts out of their spot some tape some cement i use this stuff here because um, it has a small brush inside of it and this stuff is super clean so you're not going to have a bunch of paint residue all over the place. Um, some rubbing alcohol for paint prep. Two cans of the color of your car. Metallic silver is mine. Um, you don't necessarily have to have two if you, you know, you could probably do it with one but I always use two full bottles. Um, now you can just paint it with this. But if you want to take it an extra step, uh, they do have clear coat. They have two forms of clear coat. They have wet looking clear coat and they have regular clear coat. Um, again, the only difference between the two is one looks wet and one does not. Um, and the last thing you need is a little bottle of white. And the only thing you need this for with the paintbrush is at the end to paint the side marker lights white. Um, other than that, now this is optional. This is not necessarily what you need, but um, a container would be nice. Only because if you're going to disassemble it, step away from the car for a day or two and come back to it, this just organizes all the parts really well. Um, as you can see, the one that I have here that I've taken apart has the tan interior. Um, you know, they have a black interior and sometimes just having them organized or if you're doing one or two um, to have different containers so you don't get all the parts mixed up. And this little baby comes in handy when it comes time to paint. This is a stand with alligator clips. I use this for painting it. Um, once you set it on a flat piece of wood, it allows you to get all over the car without moving it um, so that you don't get your fingerprints on it or um, run the chance of it running uh, when you accidentally touch it. Um, these things are great and they're only a few bucks. You can get them at hobby stores or Harbor Freight, but I highly recommend one or you can just put it on a piece of wood. But uh, with this, you can, you know, basically rotate it while you paint it like you're doing it on a rotisserie in a body shop. The first thing you're going to want to do is put a piece of tape on the windshield. Um, this is only for protecting the windshield from grease on your hand paint you might have on your hand or glue that you might have on your hand. Um, this windshield is very unforgiving. You get anything off on it, it's really hard to get off. Um, once you do that, what you want to do is take the car over and 
take apart the two bottom screws that are silver. So that you can remove the platform. Again, I take these screws and put them off to the side. Um, next thing you wanna do is you actually think that you're gonna wanna take apart these screws, but before you do that, um, one trick that I've learned is to remove the windshield first. And the way you do that, and again, I can't stress enough to you um, how delicate you have to be with some of these parts. Um, you don't need a lot of force. Uh, be very careful. There's been times where I've actually slipped this and scratched the windshield. Um, so be really careful with that too. And just be sure that you don't get anything on it. Um, I've actually had to buy another car just to replace the windshield when I finished the car because I did something wrong with it. So learn from my mistakes. Um, the first thing you can do is with your other hand, on the underneath of the windshield, you're gonna wanna pry up on it a little bit to get a little gap here, okay? The tabs are located here and here on the windshield, and it doesn't take a lot of force. Be gentle, just kind of wedge your wedger in there, and you know, with your underneath finger, just pop it out like that, and do the same on the other side. And the other thing that tape helps do is when it comes time to pop it out, all you gotta do is kind of just wiggle it, and it'll come right out. Okay, so I do this before anything else, and I'm going to show you why. Now, inside here on this model, you're going to see this little t tab. Okay, this holds the dash on. Okay, um, if you take a good look, all you need to do is take your pry bar, and you can actually push this back a little bit. Take your pry bar, and you want to pop this up and get it off that tab. And again, you wanna be gentle, and that's all you really need to do. Um, and I'm gonna show you why I do this step first. I learned the hard way um, to do this first, and in a minute, you're gonna see why I do that. So now, let me show you something about the underneath, okay? You do not, and I learned this after making my first car, you do not have to disassemble the wheels at all on this model, okay? First thing you want to do is you're going to want to pry this off. And again, it comes off pretty easy like that. And then you're going to want to take the rear exhaust off. And sometimes this is a little tricky, but again, gentle prying normally gets it right off. There we go. And the screws that you want to remove is this screw here, this screw here, and the screw up here to remove the body. Now, this is where the tricky part comes, all right? And the reason why we removed the windshield in the first place. The, nobody really realizes this, but the steering wheel on these cars actually works. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to remove these screws make this loose and then pop the dash out that has the little linkage to the steering component, okay? I actually have one here to kind of show you what it looks like. So here, this is the other model. This is the dash. This goes into the frame and actually allows you to steer it. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is before you disassemble the body, the interior body from the frame, is remove this so that you don't have to take all the wheels and the suspension apart. It's a big time saver and it's not that hard to do, okay? Moving on. Now what I've done is I remove this screw here, this screw here, and the one in the middle. Other than that, you don't have to take anything else apart. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to slightly pull this down like that. You see how I've created a space here. Now this is where you want to have a little bit of finesse 
and you're going to want to pull the dash out. Again, be careful with this. It should just pop right off with a little bit of prying. And what's holding it up is that part that I told you about, the steering linkage on the inside that holds the steering arm. And I typically find that a little bit of gap is what really helps it come apart. Almost there. There we go. Okay. All right, guys, next step is to remove everything off the frame so that you can prepare it for paint. And the way you do that is the way they make these, if you take a good look, all the detail pieces are all pushed through the frame. And what they do is they take some kind of soldering gun or a heat thing and they melt the tip to hold it in place. So the reason why you're gonna want to have a razor blade and this is real simple. I'm gonna start with the back of the car and work forward. Starting with the license plate, you're gonna to wanna to take your razor blade and you're gonna to wanna to shave this melted part off with the razor blade tip, okay? Like so. Again, don't worry about scratching the paint right now because you're gonna paint it anyways. All right, so once you get those tabs off, this is where the small Allen key comes in handy. What you do is you just use it to push the part out and it normally comes out pretty easy, just like that. Uh, it's not that difficult. And you're gonna find that throughout the car. Uh, next is the Rear tail lights, again, these are just melted on here, so just break off as much as you can, and you'll get a good sense of when you're at the minimum. And just use the thing to push it through. One rear tail light. Same on the other side. Over here is the gas cap, the antenna, Sometimes with the antenna, you can actually push it through without cutting anything. Um, sometimes they melt it, sometimes they don't. Let's see if we can do it with this one. Yeah, this one has been melted, so just come here, break that off, and just push it on through. I went somewhere around here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and last but not least is the gas cap. Now, if you have a Roadster uh, to remove the tunnel cover, 
you really don't have to do anything. Um, this you just have to push through and you have to push through this. What I do is I pry the front one off like that on both sides. And then I just, um, with the pry bar, with the push bar, I just push it in here and carefully. Actually, let me do it with this. Just push this on through. It doesn't take much. Just kind of got to work it. You don't necessarily have to trim anything off. Just like that. And do the same for the other side. Again, push the this tab out and then kind of work this into the hole. Little by little, this will all be covered up when you put it back together, so don't worry about messing it up. And then just kind of push it on through. Sometimes you can just do it by wedging in here and popping it out, just like that. Now, for the doors, what you do is right here on the opening of the windshield, just pry this a little bit, get a little bit of gap there. And then what you're gonna do is on the bottom side, just work that gap bigger and bigger all the way around. And these things will pop right out. I'm sorry. Right there, get a little bit of gap and just work it on around the edges. Okay, so what you can see here is you have these tabs, what's holding the door, and then you have the window insert that sits just above it on the door tabs right there. Oops, sorry, wrong way. Right there, these sit right here, and these aren't held together with anything, they just pop right out. And then you do the same on the other side. Um, here in the front, pop the hood open and what holds the hood together is, let me actually get another one out of the box so you can see this. The hood only has three tabs, the tab here, the tab here, and the tab up front. And what you want to do in order to get it out is the tab up front with your finger kind of push up, kind of get this into this gap and just pop it and it should just come right out with ease, okay? And then here, this is the little plastic piece that holds the windshield trim. You just go here underneath the hood on the corners here, just pry up, it'll just pop right out as well. There is no tabs holding it together. All right, and then close the hood and it comes right out. Now, uh, the front headlights are the same as the rear melted tabs on there. You just gotta get those off. And the ones, the tabs here at the front, um, sometimes they melt these, sometimes they don't. These are melted, so what you wanna do, again, shave the grill tab you can actually if you're skillful enough you can actually just push it out like that if you see what I just did there without breaking off the melted piece again the same for uh, the other side that comes out and then the grill at the front you're definitely going to want to remove these And then the license plate tabs as well 
while you're here. And then check these. Sometimes these need a little bit of shaving, but not really. It should come right out. All right, and then what you're gonna do here, again, with the Allen key, just push, push, come right out. License plate, come right out. And then the grill, with a little bit of effort, should come right out. And the headlights, again, these are melted tabs, so just take your razor blade, shave that melted part off, and they should come right out. Now, about the front headlights, um, these are actually two pieces. You gotta be really careful. And what I do, again, this is unforgiving material. I always just cover it with a piece of tape because again, if you're gonna have it in a tray, it's gonna move around in there, get scratched and you don't want that. So I just put a piece of tape on it until I'm ready to put it back together. And last but not least, I'm gonna get this off camera, get this side, but last but not least, the last detail that you want um, and it's overlooked sometimes is the rear tail light and to remove the reflective pieces off of the mirrors, okay? And before you paint it, you're gonna see that there's a sticker here on the door jams with the TT logo. You're gonna wanna get those as well. So what you do here for the mirrors is really all you need to do is just get the razor blade tip, get behind it, it's sticky. Um, it will stay sticky and what you want to do is put this on some kind of surface with the sticky side up so that when you reassemble it all you gotta do is just stick it back on there and it should hold um, I've had to put some cement on there a couple times um, but normally you don't need it same on this side take a razor blade tip just get in behind it pull it off you see how it's sticking to the razor blade just put it somewhere and that sticky material should hold up. And again, for this rear tail light, you're gonna see the tabs right here. They're really small. These are the smallest tabs of all. And shave the melted part off. And again, this is why I have such a small Allen key. Just kind of push this in there and it will pop it right out. Oop, there you go, came off somewhere. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, and um, on this one, I broke one side off, but again, as long as you have one tab with a little bit of cement, you can put it back in there, not a problem at all, okay? And when you're done with that, you will have a frame like this one that's ready for paint. And you do want to paint it with the mirrors on and uh, doors open, hood open, helps you get all the detail. Oh, I'm sorry, I almost forgot the uh, interior of the door. It's the same thing as the mirror. You want to grab your X-Acto knife and get up underneath here and just peel the sticker right off carefully don't rip it. it comes off just like that again I stick it somewhere for reuse same on the other side once you get the end of it you should be able to just pull it off with the razor blade tip and once I pop this panel off this frame will be ready for paint obviously uh, handling the car with my hands I've got uh, skin oil all over the car fingerprints um, grab some of that rubbing alcohol and basically wipe it down and prepare the car for paint 
once you get the exterior done, you're going to want to start handling the car from inside the frame and try not to touch the exterior as much as possible so that you get a great paint job when you're painting it. Um, some of this will be a little bit wet, get a dry towel and wipe it all down and get ready for the painting. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you're painting is paint the interior of the chassis. If you really want it to look sharp, um, what you wanna do is you wanna open all the doors open the hood, open the rear trunk. Um, they will hold each, they will hold open if you lay it down just right. You can see it's balanced on the hood and the rear hood and it's actually not even touching the piece of wood. Um, paint the interior, paint the door jams as much as you can. Stand back, make sure you're not too close so the paint doesn't run. And uh, one trick that I've learned along the way is to slightly hit the rocker panels on the car on both sides and any of the underneath curves of the car um, because once you have it on the stand like this you're not going to have to be underneath it trying to get these crazy angles um, you can basically just hit it on a flat angle and get the rest of it from there um, that's a little tip again you might do it differently I don't know how you want to handle it but that's the way that I do it so I'm about to get started here Before you start hitting it with paint, um, you want to make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Uh, I Right now it's raining, so I have the garage door open. Um, I've done this indoors and outdoors, um, so today I'm just going to paint indoors. Um, the other thing you want to watch out for too is this stuff gets mega overspray on everything. So if there's anything in the facility that you don't want to get paint on, make sure you cover it or move it out of the way. But here we go, we're about to get started. The bottom has had a chance to dry. Um, I've already mounted the stand to the little tabs underneath um, to hold the car up. If you're gonna use one of these stands, the most important thing you wanna make sure you do is that you tighten these up really good before you mount the car on there. Um, the reason is, is I've actually had it fall off this thing, you know, flip over and you, while it's wet, you're gonna have to pick it up remount it and you're going to get your fingerprints all over the paint so uh, making sure that it's tight from the beginning will alleviate that um, the table that i'm using is actually on wheels so i can actually rotate it around but um, you can also just walk around the car and spray paint this thing um, again uh, just make sure you get all the nooks and crannies and it should come out nice Uh, depending on your skill level if you decide you want to stop right here with the painting you can um, it's got a perfect shine on it but um, if you want to take it that extra step what I'm about to apply is the wet look clear coat on it um, again you can't mess up really with this it's clear um, you just want to make sure you get all the body parts and it'll give it a nice glossy wet look for when you reassemble it um, you won't be disappointed when you're done uh, one thing you want to do here though is you want to move the stand to the edge of the table because you're going to want to, uh, with your hand, well, first thing you want to do is get the underneath, the rocker panels and the under curves of the car and rotate it while you do that and get the underneath with this and then go ahead and blast everything else. Um, or else you'll get like glossy wet here and then it'll just look kind of dull here. Um, I've done this a couple times, so I'm pretty good at it, but um, it takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get it. Here we go. There it is, straight out of the paint booth. You can see that taking that extra step with the wet clear coat 
gives it an incredible glossy shine. Now what you're gonna do is all your little pieces, you're gonna put them right back on the way that you took them off and using this to hold them in place because you broke the tabs off the back. And it's super easy. I can do one of these in about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, reassembly. Uh, starting from the front, what you're gonna wanna do is grab your glue, starting with the front grill, put a little dab of glue inside the hole. On both sides. Don't need a lot of this stuff. And take your grill and just pop it back in place. Same thing goes for the side grills. like so. License plate. Ah. What just happened happens a lot. You're gonna drop a couple pieces on the ground and have to look for it, but um. Try that again with the front license plate. Oh, no wonder it wouldn't fit. This is actually the rear one, and this is the front one. The tabs are different. There we go. grill starting to look like a TT right <laughs> for the front headlights again um, for display reasons I took the tape off but what you want to do is you want to cover that up because any glue you have on your fingers it's going to get on that lens and you'll never get it off. Um, to do the front headlights all you want to do is drop a little bit of glue in the insert here. And then just push them down into the hole and peel the tape off and once that glue dries it'll hold it in place what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do it on a time lapse to finish the rest of the detail and then I will take you to the next step which is assembling the chassis
All right, guys, this is the point where you guys um, want to take the mirrors and put them back on here. Um, what I do, the easiest way that I've done it is add a little glue here. doesn't take a lot. Put the mirror on a piece of tape so that you're not handling it with your fingertips and just get it on there, hold it, and pull the table off. And you'll be able to push it in place just like that. And do the same for the other side. And you're gonna wanna get those strips, the say TT on it and put those back in place. And this is tricky, because you've got to have a steady hand, but you just stick them on there. Again, you could put some extra glue, but I find that you really don't need to. And just press it back in place and push it down, just like that. And I'm gonna do the same for the other side and install the other mirror. And uh, pretty much for the body, reassembly is done except for the windshield. And again, that's always the last piece because you don't want to scratch it. Believe it or not, you're almost done. Um, now what you need to do is marry the chassis to the frame. And I'm gonna show you my little trick um, that makes it a lot quicker. Um, so here we go. First thing you want to do is um, this steering column actually is clipped on to the dash, okay? So what you want to do very carefully because you have the shifter handles on here on the side, give it a little pinch and it will actually come apart from the dashboard, all right? Now, put that aside, take your dash. At this point, actually I didn't show you the completed car, mirrors in place, stickers in place, doors in place, rear in place, all the details. Uh, what you're going to do now is insert the dash and this just slides right on with that little tap in the front. This comes in handy. You're going to pop that over to get it to fit. Put that in and it's not going to go anywhere. All right, so you can see I'm just on top of that little tab. I'm going to push it in. It popped into place. I'm going to push it down good with my tool. And voila, the dash is in place. And the reason why you want to take this off is now what you can do is you can marry these two together slightly and reassembly. This is the only tricky part that might take you a little bit if you don't have any uh, experience doing something like this but what you want to do is make sure that the steering wheel is centered okay and what you're gonna do is you're gonna push this through the frame and get it into a tiny little slot and let me show you exactly what that slot looks like the front steering has this little, let me see if you can see it, this little thing right here, right? This actually goes inside of this, 
when you push it through and you can see here that the tip is a little bit curved um, sometimes what I do to make my life easier is I shave a little bit of that off so that it slides in a little easier um, snapping it together will hold it in place so this is kind of not really necessary okay and so what I've done is I've taken a little bit off of that so that when I'm pushing it through it's gonna pop into this a little easier you see how that just kind of slid on without doing what I just did you'd have to kind of force that a little bit so again these aren't really tight together and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that steering column and I am gonna push it through there's a hole down there you're gonna to have to feel for it you want to make sure the wheels are straight and you want to push the steering column right on in just like that and now if you struggle with reassembling the steering column this is another way you can do it um, from the underneath so what you want to do is remove these two screws pop this front side out make sure that you have the car upside down or else your steering will come all apart pop this cover off here's the steering mechanism and the easiest way to do this with the car upside down make sure that you insert it with the bottom this way and what you're going to want to do is get this through that little square in there and what you do I do this blind because I've done it so many times but get it lined up inside that steering hole and in here if you're gonna do it this way the easiest thing to do is to push down on this and get that tab further in there so that you can get that steering column into that little square and this just takes a little little finesse all right as you can see here I got the steering all back together I'm gonna go ahead and reattach this plate put the two screws back in And now the last part of it all just want to pop the exhaust on rear one first and then put the front exhaust piece on by snapping that into place put the three body screws on uh, the one in the uh, oh I'm sorry Ugh. missed a step here before you put this on you want to put that screw in and then the two here in the back and you are going to be done There you go guys, the car's all done. The only thing you need to do is insert the windshield back. And the way you do that is, again, you push it past the windshield wipers, get that into place, and then just pop the tabs back in and then peel the tape and mount it to your base. Uh, one thing about the base, you can actually remove this trim 
and if you want to paint it a different color or the color of your car you can these pop right out um, depending on how far you want to go with this here it is the finished car on the mount um, one thing you can do on these things too um, is customize the license plate I actually made it match my license plate and I'm gonna do the same in the one in the front but um, the detail of this little model is incredible it's very accurate um, the one flaw it does have is that this tail light has the silver dot this one does not I've painted them on before but it kind of looks silly um, I basically leave them like that I don't know it's just gonna sit on somebody's desk but um, there it is and you know steering wheel works doors open hoods flap open you can even find a, a glass case to put it in if you want but that's it I hope you guys found this helpful and uh, please send me photos of your finished model thanks